Briscoe. This is Briscoe. You got Truett here, and Philip is also here on the same line. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what's up? My name is Natalie. I'm, um, I am from IU student radio station WIUX. I'm so glad you could talk today. Well, we are so uh, glad to be talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, of course. Have you guys been to Bloomington before, or is this your first time coming through? We have been to Bloomington, actually. We were uh, in Bloomington about a year ago mm-hmm. uh, playing uh, a show with Mr. Noah Kahn at uh, IU. So. Oh, yeah, the IU Auditorium. Okay, well, I should have... Uh, the IU Auditorium. That should have come up in my research. That's amazing. Um, how was that experience? It was incredible. I mean, Noah Kahn obviously is on top of the world. Um and we got to do a run of shows with him at a few different universities kind of throughout the midwest and yeah i mean it was just a dream there's there's nothing better than just getting to to play a show in a really cool auditorium with a super attentive crowd yeah seriously so that was that was a real treat and then now getting to come back and uh play Bloomington again is I mean we're so pumped also we just really enjoyed the the city and the town I mean it's just a fun place to be so it is yeah I I love Bloomington I mean whether you're seeing the university or not there's still a lot of charm so I think it it will be definitely different the bishop is not the auditorium but it's my favorite venue here in town um, All right. So I hope you guys enjoy it there. I feel like they they always bring in the coolest act, so you should feel you should feel great about playing there. Um, okay. In the realm of playing auditoriums, playing um, at different schools or across the country, do you have a favorite um, like type of gig to play? Are you are big on festivals? Do you like playing at these auditoriums, or do you just all kind of treat them the same? That's a great question. Um, you know, they each bring something so different. For example, I love playing uh, festivals because it's really cool to be able to play in front of a brand new crowd for the most part um, mm. and really have a high energy, a shorter set. So we play a lot of quicker, fun songs that get people's attention. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's really fun for us to be able to do these headline shows in smaller club rooms because... Um, we can really uh, get the attention of the whole crowd. And um, we like to do a part in the set where we play duo as well. Mm. Uh, And a lot of times we'll unplug our instruments and go out in the crowd. And uh, that's a really cool experience that we get to have. So uh, we've been doing this this headline tour for a while now. So it's fresh on my mind, but that's that's my favorite. And it's really fun for us to get to be able to um, meet people who already love our music and also play in front of a, a few people that have just, you know, kind of wandered into the venue as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like you guys have really, like, just looking back at the shows you've played, you've played quite a variety, so it's good to have things that you like, but also to just be doing all sorts of cool things. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm wondering, um, because you your inception was at UT Austin, when you were students, um, obviously it makes, just listening to your music, I'm not surprised you guys are from Texas, Um, but when you're playing, when you were got started playing for audiences in Texas um, and then started to expand and travel across the country, have you noticed a change just in, in your audiences? Do you feel like there's a difference in playing for hometown crowds versus you know, maybe people like myself who live in the Midwest. Um, yeah, just have you just noticed anything in terms of who you're playing for? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, having, like you said, started and, and really playing a ton of shows in Austin and in Texas. Uh, it's it's different just because we kind of had a head start by a few years there mm-hmm. relative to a lot of these other cities. Um, and so just getting to play at home or around home is is incredible i mean we're gearing up late spring to play our biggest headline show to date in austin Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's just there's just nothing like playing to a home crowd 
uh, yeah, I mean, a, a home crowd is just, you know, it, that's sweeter than freshly cut pineapple, <laughs> you know? And uh, getting to play on the road is also super fun and getting to kind of build up these new markets and starting to kind of come back through some of those markets that we've uh, played through once is also a blast because you just get to, you know, continue to build that up and hopefully see some familiar faces and and you just it's it's an interesting thing being on the road because you're going to all these different cities but you start to see some familiar faces and, and build some friendships and relationships uh throughout the the country which is super fun so it's yeah. definitely different um and uh playing hometown is i mean there's nothing like it but we i mean it's so much fun getting to build up fans and friends all across the country Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome um that's super cool i i just personally like i'm not as tapped into like americana or folk music maybe as i am some other genres that um are found in bloomington so it's cool to have it's I'm, i bet you're reaching a lot of different people who maybe you guys are their their entryway into a certain kind of music um yeah yeah um, you're ta just talking about markets and touring. Um, I know I you was emailing your team to set this interview up, but um, I'm assuming as you were getting started as you know first writing solo music and then forming the band that you, obviously you're very hands on just in the inception of this as not only a creative project but also um, a career. But I'm just wondering, do the two of you enjoy the business of being an artist? Um, like what I mean, obviously, so much of being a musician is just writing the music, recording it, and touring. But are there aspects? Because I know Philip, you do a lot of the graphic design. I think I read somewhere. Um, but are there are there things that you guys enjoy just outside the traditional, you know, writing, recording, playing music? Absolutely, that's a great question. So we, like you said, uh, have been a band for a while now and and one of the really cool parts about that is just being able to kind of uh determine your niche and and your brand right as well which is really cool for us mm -hmm. uh, as we you know like you said are recording songs and writing songs um it's also cool to pair that with you know visual components um uh, with merchandise uh, and also be able to form this team that's behind us um, is a really cool aspect of it as well. And, you know, you just every what I've learned so far in our short time as uh, musicians is that it's really just a really big umbrella of people that you work with uh, mm -hmm. who help make this whole thing happen. And um it's just really cool to, to learn that and to be able to have so many relationships within the industry. And, uh, like you said as well, the graphic design aspect is a part of it that I love to do and, um, an opportunity for us to, uh, like I mentioned earlier to really, really brand ourselves and our music as well. So I think there's a lot of different things that we love besides just the recording and the writing, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, just to tack on to that real quick, I think, you know, you hear those like stereotypical horror stories of, of artists or bands that, you know, are like straight just about the music and, and the business side of things is their kryptonite. Mm -hmm. But I think we found it very interesting to kind of be involved or at least be in the, in the room with uh, a lot of our team on, on navigating, like Philip was saying, how do we create this brand and, uh, and and market it and and do all the things to bring the music to life so it's super interesting yeah that's cool and i feel like especially when i don't know i'm just i i feel like i'm aware of a lot of musicians or people in the industry who are you know they're not only touring musicians but they're also maybe booking for a venue or they're i feel like people in this industry are if they're interested in it they might be doing multiple different facets of the industry so it it definitely helps to be in the know about everything um, going on. So cool. I'm glad to hear that you guys enjoy a lot of those things. Um, beginning from like when, you know, you're talking about branding and, and um, 
all this sort of things. I mean, at what point did it did it kind of hit you guys that okay, this is this is real. Like this is this is gearing up to be something big. Do you feel like you had a moment um, when that occurred? That's a great question. Um, so I, I think I would say that we've always believed in our songwriting um, mm-hmm. and were confident in our ability to, you know, take this thing further down the road. But I think one of one of the moments that it felt like, wow, this is actually really happening is um, – a few i guess a couple years ago we had just kind of started working with these booking agents uh and they're really great guys and we had our very first interaction with them we played a couple songs and then they kind of were talking to us afterwards and they were like um well hey guys we really like your stuff do you want to open for the band camp Oh, shoot. And we were like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, of course we want to open for camp, one of our favorite artists. Um, and that was really the first big opportunity that we've had. Um, and, yeah, that was kind of just like an eye-opening moment for us. Yeah, super cool. I, I saw that. That's They're amazing. So that's so cool. Where, where did the show end up being at? We opened for camp at Stubbs in Austin and at uh, White Oak Amphitheater in Houston, Texas. Okay, cool. Hopefully, maybe another collab in the future. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you, yeah, you said, talked about believing in your songwriting, which I think you have to if you're going to make it. Um, but how do you think your songwriting has evolved since... Um, your self-titled EP into making West of All, West of It All, excuse me. Yeah, well, that's a great question. Songwriting is just such a funny thing because it can happen in so many different ways. You know, a lot of times we'll be driving and we'll we'll get influenced by, a, a, you know, some beautiful scenery or other times, you know, I could be down on my kneecaps fixing my kitchen sink uh-huh. and get inspired to write some song. So I think that uh, I think that West of All is really just West of it all <laughs> is a um, just a testament to how we've grown as songwriters and how uh, we really are, you know, uh, seem to be kind of honing in on the things that matter to us. And I think that that's reflected in the songs on West of It All. And I think that you know it doesn't take, in my opinion, too long to listen back to some of our older stuff and be able to tell that uh, our songwriting has uh, changed a little bit. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so I think that, yeah, I think that I, I guess I would say that our songwriting more so than ever is uh, reflecting our lives and um, true to ourselves as individuals, which I think is cool. And I think that's the kind of songwriting that we appreciate. So I think it's, that we're you know getting to uh, that point yeah I think um, I really just enjoyed listening through West of It All because I mean it feels it feels I mean you were saying you can draw inspiration from a lot of different places but it feels very rooted in Austin or in Texas well, I mean west of Austin I guess and just all the nature imagery and um, it, very, it feels very much like a cohesive like when you're talking about all these all these descriptions in nature places I'm just I'm like put in the same scenery throughout the whole um album do you feel like when you're on tour and you're moving about do you like I mean I just want to hear a little bit more about your experiences in nature because it seems very significant in your songwriting and um do you miss that when you're on the road are you seeking out those sorts of places when you're out or do you just embrace all of the craziness that touring might bring yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, it's definitely different when you're on the road in terms of like experiencing nature and being able to get out um, and and how that plays out in a songwriting context is also different, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, we try our best, I'd say, to implement opportunities for us to, you know, whether it's stopping in a national park or a national forest or this or that, um, to kind of see the parts of the country we're at. Uh, we really love 
to be outside and just experiencing that regardless of where we are and and one of the beautiful things about getting to travel across the country is we really just get to see like all sorts of uh, geography and so we were just out in the western united states and and drove essentially up the coast of california all the way up to seattle and i mean getting to see that part of the country is awesome uh, yeah. and we and we planned various stops um by the ocean and at beaches and and in the mountains and all that good stuff and then i think out uh out here as well there's just a lot of really cool unique uh things that each part of the country has to offer um and so we really try to take advantage of that, of that. In, in terms of songwriting you know a lot of we're spending a lot of time in the van and so even if we're not you know stopping at the national park or forest you, you kind of just get this cool opportunity to sit and look out the window at this landscape that is pretty dang different from from where we come from in texas and so just getting to do that is a, is a really cool thing and uh i think we've both found ourselves uh riding a good bit in the van uh for me it's been a very different process without a guitar in my hand or, or a piano in front of me mm. uh it's almost almost closer to, to like writing a poem really mm. um which is which has been a fun and kind of new thing and but yeah there's there's just i mean the the inspiration is everywhere if you if you just kind of look for it yeah that's awesome i that's cool i feel like um it could get hectic at times and so to be able to seek out those those cool places on your travels is wonderful um yeah i hope you've enjoyed indiana's very flat landscape um <laughs> there's some great great parks but it definitely is it can be uh you can see a lot you can see a lot because there's no yeah no, you can see a lot also we're we're getting about an hour outside of bloomington right now and i remember last time there being some good a good bit of hills as you come in and oh, trees sorry. and all that good stuff there's there's some there's some stuff for the eyes good <laughs> i'm happy to hear um and then I think my just my final question for you is, um, what are you excited for that's coming up next? Anything? I mean, you, obviously you have the whole leg of your tour ahead of you, um, but is there anything else that you're just looking forward to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so the whole, we've got, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a few weeks left on this spring tour um and it's it's exciting to be able to hit some of these markets we've been to before uh like bloomington um but what i'm really looking forward to is our biggest hometown show to date we're uh headlining stubs the same venue that we got to open for camp at um on april 26th which is is incredible and super exciting for us and and a, a milestone for the band so um that'll be a great way to kind of wrap up this spring stretch so i'm really looking forward to that yeah that's awesome um how about you um i've been i've been talking to philip this whole time right how about true it we've been we've been bouncing back and forth actually we've done a really poor job of stating who is who no it's okay that was I, Phillip, though. okay good no true i recognize your voice what about you sweet uh yeah, I think Stubbs is going to be hard hard to beat, obviously. Um, another one, so the day after Stubbs, we're playing um, in a city called Lukenbach, Texas, um, which in the country music world and in the Texas country music world, Lukenbach Dance Hall is, is just one of the most historic places um, out there. And so hopefully we'll have ourselves a real good night at Stubbs and then Lukenbach the next day will get to kind of be a, a, a nice little bow at the end of um, this spring tour. And so we're really looking forward to that one as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Whereas Stubbs feels like, obviously it's going to be awesome, but it feels like a lot more, maybe not pressure is the right word, but a lot more that goes into it. Lukenbach feels like a, a victory lap, if you will, or a yeah. after party. So I'm excited for that. I mean, it's just, it's a crazy thought to be playing such a legendary place um that is so significant in 
Texas music and really country music and folk music at large. So we're really excited for that. That's amazing. I hope both of those shows go awesome. They will. Um, but yeah, th- I thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Um, I hope the rest of your drive to Bloomington is great and the show is just as fun. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you so much.